Hi guys. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I will put this up on YouTube later. I just can't right now because my YouTube, I still can't get into my YouTube account. So I'll put this up as soon as I can. Um, today's sermon is called Nothing About Nothing about his love makes sense. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I give you praise, oh God. Fill my mouth with what you would have me say, what you would have me do. This platform is yours. I dedicate it to you, Lord Jesus. Speak to us individually and say something different to us all at the same time. Speak to me, speak through me. I am your willing vessel. Hide me behind the cross. Um, amen. So guys, I thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, this is, this sermon is called Nothing About His Love Makes Sense. Um, <laughs> And that's so true. Um, when I, um, I was listening to um, the song by Leanne Rhymes, Nothing About Love Makes Sense. And I was like, I could so relate that to um, Jesus and um, his whole love for us. When I think about the Bible, and when I think about the concept of God, it just baffles my mind. Like, it doesn't make sense at all. Like, this being from nowhere just created this whole world and in his divine place plan just created the whole world in six days and um and is now looking out for all of us and, and it doesn't it doesn't make sense to the human mind so that's why i don't blame atheists at all for not believing or agnostics for not knowing because it baffles the mind. And um, even in the Bible, it says, great are the mysteries of God. No one can uncover them. It's just the mystery of God is so great and it doesn't make sense. And, and when we when we think of J Jesus, that is even more baffling. You're telling me that this being from nowhere had had um, what you you're calling a son and that son came down to earth to save the world and died on the cross. So, like, it when you think about it with your human understanding, it doesn't make sense at all. But I'm telling you, it's true. Um, how, how I know it's true is... Be, because not because I grew up a Christian and I grew up believing that. That started it. My parents gave me an, an awesome foundation. But when I got to understand God for myself, when I got to go through life and understand him for myself, that's when I understood that it was that it's all true like um when i started um going through school and 
and going through life myself. That's why I understood that everything my parents were telling me was true. And you're right. Uh, the Christian belief is it's kind of strange from the human mind. And it's much better to believe that there is uh, something out uh, like it's much better to believe in evolution because it it makes more human sense um than the whole Christianity thing. I don't blame you, but uh to walk with the Lord to experience the Lord that's when you um become a believer um when you when he actually does things for you and you cannot explain it as the universe or anything like that you have to ex- explain it as god did this for me because the universe is created it's not the creator and the reason why people call things the universe is because they don't like attaching a name to it because they because of the way that Christians have p- portrayed um god and because of what we've done Christians Muslims and other people in the name of God, people don't like antiquating that to their lives. So calling it the universe for people out there is safer because calling calling life or God the universe, okay, you because ca- ca- calling things the universe uh, means if you say the universe is for me today without saying God is for me today, that means you're you, you're wanting God, you're wanting something out there, but you're not. Um, but because of what we betray, you don't want the God part of it. You just want the good part of it. Because if you acknowledge that it's not just the universe, that it is indeed a being out there, like a being with thoughts and feelings and uh, do's and don'ts, that means you have to be accountable. If you just say it's the universe or the universe is for me, it takes the responsibility or accountability out of it. And you don't have to... um, be kind of you don't have to be accountable or obedient to anything because if it's just the universe you don't have to obey anything like it's almost like we want God we want the uh, attributes of God but we don't want the uh accountability of God because one thing with God is he will keep you accountable uh, he will keep you accountable to himself to his word and we don't like being accountable to anyone and I think 
I think that's that's what it is, because um, it's e- it's easier or more environmentally friendly to say the universe rather than God, and some people use it interchangeably, but no, I. Th- this is this is my opinion. The universe was created by God. The universe is not God. God is a thinking, feeling, loving uh, being who is ready to give everything to you. He's he's ready to take you through life to scoop you up in his arms and love you. But on the other side of the coin, if you're wrong or if you're off track, he'll say, he'll lovingly just just say, honey, you're off track there. Or he'll he'll just he'll just in his own way take you through life. And the universe won't do that. The universe is just a created thing. All the galaxies and planets and the earth. It's something that God created to be enjoyed, but God didn't create it to replace him. God did not create the universe to create, to replace him. And that's what we've done as a society. Because because we don't want the accountability, we want all the lovey-dovey good stuff of God, but we don't want to be accountable for our actions. We don't want to be told, no, that's wrong. Or, no, that's not how I set things up to be. We just like to call things the universe. And I I just, I just, I just think, Lord, what have we done? We've taken something that you've created for us to enjoy and for us to live on and for us to gather fruit from and and replaced you with it and replaced it and replaced you with it and we started taking you out of it and, and using what you've created to to say, oh, the universe gave me this or whatever. Nope. The universe didn't give you anything, honey. God gave you that thing. Or God loves you. Okay, because for me, the way I define God, he's a thinking feeling being who uh, creates things, um, who allows things, who who guides, who guides human beings through life. And nothing about God, nothing about his love makes sense. But the the thing I can say um, is just try it. You don't have to understand it, but just try it and trust me. If you try God and if you try Jesus, he will show up in your life and things will start happening that you would not believe. Because it's just um, divine timing and it's, it's 
like, because um, it's just great things will start happening. Do bad things happen? Yes. Most definitely. Uh, does God cause bad things to happen? Sometimes, if we need to learn a lesson or or if we if we need to do certain things sometimes and sometimes bad things happen just because of life sometimes sometimes life sucks and does he allow bad things to happen yes does he allow kids to die yes does he allow People to get shot, yes. Does he allow all these things to happen? Yes. Because life, he created life. Uh, And life is about balance. You cannot have good without uh, bad. And you cannot have bad without good. It's just the balance of life. And yes, we love when good things happen to us and, and bad things happen to us. But, and we, sorry, and we don't like when bad things happen to us, but we've got to remember that in the end, everything, every good thing, every challenging thing, Every bad thing, every every joyful thing is working out for our good. So it doesn't feel good at the time, but God will use um, what God will use what He. God will use everything in life, good things, bad things, to grow you. Like, and you say, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, I, I, most times, I don't know, but sometimes it's for their growth. Sometimes it's for the growth of their loved ones. Sometimes it's for, you know, see, God knows all. And uh, because God is omniscient, all-knowing, he just knows everything. So he knows what he's doing. Is life fair all the time? No. No, is life just all the time? No. But sometimes it's not God that causes it. Sometimes that's just life. And sometimes um, when life is life, and as they say, it can be really rough. But understand that God, the being that feels, thinks, um, imagines, um, is there with us. Um, Because going back to Genesis, going back to Genesis, when it says God, God breathed into man and he became a living soul, when God breathed into man, it wasn't only the uh, breath, like the physical breath, or what, whatever they would say. Say it, it was, it was God put into us everything that He had. So every emotion, sadness, anger frustration, every emotion, joy, peace, love, forgiveness, every emotion that he had with his breath became 
our emotions. And because we have every emotion and it caused us to become a living soul, that's why we're most like like God because um, not that we are our God, we're not. But when he breathed into us, he wanted someone to reflect him. So along with his breath, didn't only become like uh, the breath, but along with his breath, we got all his emotions and all his, all his, um, uh, kind of, um, uh, we got, we got parts of him, we got all of these parts of him when he breathed into us. So, when you think of Jesus, we like to think of Jesus as this, Oh, love thy neighbor as thyself, and whatever we we love to think of Jesus as this this free Jesus. But I believe um, Stephen Furtick had a series years and years ago now called Savage Jesus, um, which means that Jesus was very. Um, he was, he could, he could be a savage, or he could be boss, as we say. Like, he could just, what he spoke was so on point. He was just, he could be, like, like, like us, one day we could be happy and full of joy. And one day we could be discouraged and whatever. We could be discouraged and angry. We could go from turning over tables in the temple to saying, oh, suffer the little children to come come to me. So um, I think when you, when you understand that there are parts of God that will never make sense. But one thing I can say is that his love may not make sense, but just keep going. Keep walking with him through life. And maybe one day you'll understand and maybe one day you won't. But I'm telling you that everything in your life is is working for your good right right now and it may not make sense but it's true and i'm i'm just sent today to tell you that god loves you it may not make sense it may it may not be like something to make sense about, but I, I'm telling you that it doesn't have to make sense. He loves you, and that's it, point blank, period. And I'm not saying, um, but saying that he loves you doesn't mean you don't have to change some things, or he won't require anything of you. Uh, you see, why do you call... Um, when you say the universe loves me, well, the universe doesn't require a thing of you, but when you say God loves you, um, or when, when you say not God, when you call the universe, the, when you call uh, when you replace God with the universe, it takes the onus off of you. God's love doesn't require anything. He loves you, point blank, period. And that's it. 
but um, when you acknowledge that there's a God, there's a uh, living, breathing, thinking being that who created you, who loved you, who wants the best for you, it 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 will require some change. Not may, but will require some change. Whereas when you call something the universe, it doesn't require change. It just doesn't require change and and accountability. And God will have you be accountable for your actions. And... And the universe won't, and we don't like to be told uh, what to do. It. We don't like to be told no. We don't like to be told this is wrong. We like, we like to be told whatever you feel, do it. And the Lord would say, no, I know what's best. And that's it. Because he does. You think the God that created this whole universe that that loved you so much that he gave you all of his emotions, all of his stuff, um, that um, you think he'll just let you just go on your own way, see you going wrong and not say anything? No, 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 honey, he loves you so, he loves you too much for that. He knows you're better than where you're living, how you're living. And he wants me to say that he loves you regardless of who you are, regardless of what you did or whatever. He's saying, just come. And I will, through a process of time, get you to where I want you to be. And he says, yes, it will require change in your life, but that's okay. Trust me. He's saying, I'm I'm not like, man, he's saying, he said this. He's saying this. He said, think of the best family you could ever think of or think of a person that you admire. Think of a person that you've always wanted to be be like. He's saying, in that person you've always wanted to be like or in that family you've always seen and wanted to emulate, that's traces of me there. That's traces of me there. I want to love you like that. I want to be with you like that. He's like, he's like, um, and I heard somebody say, what does it mean when it says God is a jealous God? Does it mean he's jealous of me? No, no, no. It doesn't mean he's jealous of you. It means he is so enamored b- by you. He is upset. He is so obsessed with you. I read a lot of, <laughs> I read a lot of uh, romance novels. What they call romance novels, but arguably they're not romance novels. They're actually uh, something else. But I read a, a lot of novels where men are obsessed with the women that they that they are in love with, and they're just they just have to be around that per, those women. And God's giving me a picture of that's how he feels about you. He's obsessed with you. 
He loves you. He doesn't want to control you. He wants to be with you. He wants to go. He wants to offer protection to you. He wants to be a part of your life. Um, I wish, this is my earnest prayer. I wish people would take the Christian mask down and just let God be a part of their whole lives. You know? Um, it's just amazing when I think about it, how God just wants to uh, walk with, talk with, give instruction on people's whole life. And God wants to enter people's whole life. And um, we say we say often when we when we uh, talk about uh, what we call salvation, uh, which which just means asking Jesus. Uh, what we call uh, asking Jesus, we say a lot, um, the Lord of your life. And I was thinking of uh, that term. I said, well, uh, sometimes you ask for Jesus to come into your life, but he's not the Lord of your life. See, the Lord of your life, when you talk about the Lord of a nation or the king of a nation or whatever, it's the leader I think of a leader, because so when you think of uh, King Charles, um, or yeah, you know King Charles or uh, Prince William, or you know, not Prince William, or or the Prince of Wales, I think he is now. You think of a leader. So, and way back in ancient uh, Eng England, there were lords and there were ladies and everything, and they were the leaders of these of this nation. So, when he said, when we say he is the king of kings, lord of lords, those are not just Christian terms. But what we're saying is basically he is the leader of the world. We're saying he is leader. He is above King Charles and any king you could think of. Um, we're saying that he's above all the lords of England, past, present, and future. We're saying he's above all of that. But while being above all that, he still wants to be very personal to you. He's not a distant God. He wants to walk with you in every part of your, your life. He wants to raise your kids with you. He wants to make sure you have money in your bank. He'll guide your finances. He'll... He'll guide you to the right people that you need to have the kind of life that he's created for you if you would just let him in. Uh, like, and I'm not saying Jesus come into my heart. That's uh, the first step. But he's saying he wants to be Lord of your life, not just, not just, he wants to know you, not just know about you. Like, like to tell you the truth, I know about Justin Timberlake. I can tell you he was born, he was born um, January 31st, 1981. I can tell you that he has a son, Silas. He's married to Jessica Beale Timberlake. I could tell you all of that. I know about him, but I don't really know him. 
I don't really know him. And that's the problem uh, with some people. They know about God. They even pray to God, but they don't really know him. When the Bible says to know, it talks about being intimate. God wants to be intimate with you. The only thing that, the only way that any of this makes sense is through intimacy. And God wants to be intimate with his children. God wants to know his children. And through intimacy, into me you see, he wants to see into you. And he wants to let you see into him. He wants you to tell him all your secrets. All your secrets. And he wants to share his secrets with you. So it it's like a real intimate relationship. See, I think we've confused intimacy with sex. Sex is not intimacy. Sex it can be a physical manifestation of intimacy. But uh, intimacy starts before sex. You know, um, people can be married and have sex but not be intimate. You can you could have sex with someone and not be intimate with them. Uh, like you could have this the physical act of sex with someone and not be intimate with them. And you could have intimacy without sex. But when you have both together, it's ex- it's explosive. And so the Lord wants to so be intimate with you. He wants to know you like crazy and he wants you to know him like crazy. And all... Like, and you would talk to some uh, preacher and say that they'll say the way to know the Lord is to read his word. That's one of the ways to know him. But I find for me, when, um, like, it really takes time because the Lord is so vast. He doesn't speak only one way. There's not only one way he speaks. It depends on his children. It depends on what they, um, who they are and how how they roll and whatever. And God has many ways of speaking. And the only way that you're going to understand and hear the voice of God and know that he's speaking to you is through time. So you need to develop a personal relationship just like any other relationship needs development. Any marriage, any friendship, any um, romantic relationship, any business relationship needs development the relationship with God needs development too. And it requires talking to God, and it requires spending time with the Lord and developing your rhythm with Him, like I've said several times, and everybody's rhythm with the Lord is different, and it it depends on where He's taking you, and how you roll and whatever, and nobody's relationship with the Lord is the same. And you and you will know whether you're in relationship with the Lord or not. And when you're in real relationship with the Lord, you'll know if something is true or not true. 
because it'll resonate with your spirit and it, it will just jive with you because of the relationship you have with him. And I think that many Christians don't have a real relationship with God. They have a Sunday visiting thing or maybe they pray, pr pray before they leave the house and they call that a relationship with God. But he wants to walk with you, talk with you, solve problems with you, you know, come up with strategy for, for wherever you're working or whatever you're doing in your life. He wants to do that with you. He wants to be in your daily, in your day. He wants to um, be on your daily grind with you. He wants to help you through situations. He wants to be there with you when you're raising your kids or, you know, having issues. Not only just calling on him when you have issues. He wants to be there in the happy moments, too. He wants to be there when you're watching Netflix. He wants to do all that kind of stuff with you. And it's totally awesome when you're in that kind of relationship with Jesus. With Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your, for your love. And thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Thank you, Lord, for, for explaining things to us. Thank you, Lord, for uh, exp explaining the difference between um, uh, the universe and God. Lord, thank you for teaching us today. We bless you. We love you. We bless you. We love you. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Bye, guys.